So after several years of using butcher block countertops in our kitchens, we tried a couple of different products for sealing the butcher blocks and we landed on a product that we really love. So we're going to share what that product is, how we sealed and finished the countertops initially, and what we do to refinish and maintain them over time. So when we first installed butcher block countertops in our previous home, um, we, we didn't have any experience having butcher block, but we liked how they looked. They were a really cost-effective countertop option. Um, and so we did what anyone else would do is we went to our hardware store and we saw what the options were for, refin for finishing our countertops. And we ended up buying some sort of beeswax mineral oil blend. Yeah, it's the standard one you find at any hardware store. It's a little tube of mm -hmm. beeswax, mineral spirits, or mineral oil. Seemed like a natural-ish option, so we're like, okay, that sounds good. We'll go with it. Yeah, and we did, and and we really were happy with it. We thought it worked really, really well for the most part, and those countertops held up decent. The one thing I would say is that as the person who mainly does the cooking in our house and spends a lot, a lot, a lot of time in the kitchen, um, I was kind of felt like I was walking on pins and needles anytime I made something because if you set like a cold glass down on your countertop, like almost instantly you'd have a ring there or anytime you spilled something, like <laughs> for the longest time there was beet juice marks, like purple, bright purple marks in our countertop. Um, and there was just no getting them out. I always felt like you're kind of walking on pins and needles because if something did spill, it soaked up really, really quickly. But I think I just thought, well, that's just the nature of butcher block. And so that's just kind of what we get. And so probably like every year we sanded those down and reapplied the beeswax mineral oil finish and it, it was fine. Um, but when we moved into our house here, we, and actually it was even before we installed these countertops, Jim decided to make these um, cutting, board. cutting boards, butcher block cutting boards <laughs> with the extra scrap pieces from our previous house's countertops um, as a Christmas gift for me and some other family members. Yeah, so I knew I wanted something that would hold up a little bit better, being that this would get like everyday sort of use. You which know, it has. Which it has, and so I wanted something a little it would penetrate better, seal better. And so looking into the options out there, I found tongue oil. And so researching that a little bit more, found out that that's a really great natural food safe um, sealer for butcher block countertops especially. And you can use it for a lot of other things, floors and we tables. actually, tables. We've actually gone on like our trim in our house, we've mm -hmm. sealed with tongue oil as well. But we, we first tried it on this cutting board and I have actually not refinished. I plan on doing that hopefully later today, but have not refinished this cutting board since... It's probably been about four years. About four years ago. Three, three And we years, still yeah. use it every single day, and this yeah. thing has held up incredibly well. We were sold after that, trying it on there, and we, we knew when we moved into this house and refinished or redid our kitchen, got butcher block countertops in here that tongue oil was the no-brainer. So we use the tongue oil from Real Milk Paint Co. We've been super happy with it. This is actually, so what we used for our countertops here is their dark tongue oil. They have just the standard one, which is what we use to finish the cutting board here. So you can see it's more of just the natural wood finish, and then they have the dark tongue oil. So this is the dark half tongue oil, and so it's essentially a 50-50 blend of tongue oil and citrus solvent. And so it's already pre-mixed. You can buy them just the tongue oil and then the citrus solvent separate and mix them on your own. I like to just get the half because that's the ratio they already recommend for butcher block. And so it's pre-mixed, it's ready to go. And essentially you're just cutting down the tongue oil itself is almost too thick to penetrate and really go in and seal the countertops uh, super well. But if you cut it down with the citrus, citrus solvent, it helps it penetrate in and so it really works in deep and gives you a deep kind of almost waterproof like um, protection on your countertop. Yeah, and from, a, from the cook in the kitchen's perspective, this stuff has been awesome on our countertops because two years into having the tongue oil on our countertops, we have not refinished them at all in the last two years and they still look really, really, really good. Um, there's there's some areas, especially where I do where the cutting board sits all the time, and I do all my chopping where there are some scratches and marks and stuff there. But it's really it's not that noticeable. It's not that bad. 
but we just wanted to give them a refinish, but they it's really held up so, so well. Yeah, like, like we said, we, we have some heavy use here in the kitchen. In two years, we've put a lot of miles on these countertops. They've held up super well. Yeah. They look really almost brand new, but we just want to stay on top of the maintenance mm -hmm. and kind of give them a refinish. So that's what we're going to do here today. They're, even though they held up really well, you still, with any butcher block and any sealer that you have, unless you do like a, you know, like a poly kind of plastic finish on top, you do need to walk, they will absorb, so you can't just set like a water bottle on it and leave it there overnight and expect there to not be something the next day. But these have held up so, so, so much better than our previous countertops did with the beeswax. So just to walk you through what I did to seal these countertops initially, and I should preface this that I'm not like a professional woodworker or anything. I do, you know, I'm kind of like a weekend warrior and try and tackle some home projects and things like that. But, you know, you don't, you don't have to be a professional. Finishing your countertops with tongue oil to start is a really easy process. So you'll want to start by just giving them a light sanding, making sure it's smooth to go. You don't want to do anything too fine, so like 150 grit sandpa sandpaper is as fine as you want to go on those. But you'll give them just a light sanding to start, and then you're just going to start working in your tongue oil. So you basically, what I did was just poured some out on the countertops initially, got like an old rag or a sock or something, and just just rubbed it in and, and worked it into the, the grain of the wood. You could do some with the grain and some kind of against the grain to really work it in as you're, you're rubbing in that tongue oil. And you're gonna do a lot of coats. So that first coat that you do is gonna absorb super quick into the wood because it's, you know, it's raw wood. It's gonna absorb quickly into that. And then each coat after that that you apply is going to start absorbing in less and less until that wood is kind of fully penetrated and sealed and saturated with the tongue oil. So I think initially we did like six to eight coats or something like that the first day. If you go on Real Milk Paint Co's uh, website, they have a really great post that we can link to as well of how they recommend finishing, but they actually do kind of like a first day and then a second day of applying finishes. And then it does, there is a curing time. So you want to let it kind of use, use your kitchen countertops lightly in the first 30 days until it's fully cured. So we basically just put on, you know, as many coats as we could until it seemed like that oil was fully saturated in there and it wasn't going to absorb anymore and just let it sit and dry and kind of wiped away any of the excess. And really from that first day on, they look, they look beautiful. It leaves a really nice matte finish on the countertops. And then for refinishing, it's a really similar process to that. So like I said, we haven't refinished them in two years. They still look really good, but like our island here in particular gets a lot of use. So basically any spots that you're going to find, you, you can sand, you know, do a light sanding again, get any spots out. You could re-sand the whole countertop, but if you want to just hit some spots that could use a refinish, you can also go that route. And then you're just gonna do the same thing. Apply a couple coats of the, of the tongue oil, let it soak in in between each coat, and then kind of wipe away any excess in the end, and let that cure for, you know, uh, as you use the countertops as lightly as you can in the next couple days, let it really soak in well and kind of cure and harden. But after that, your countertops are, are good to go and you've basically got brand new countertops again. So that's been our experience finishing and refinishing our butcher black countertops using tongue oil. We've loved it. It's been such a good product for us. So let us know what you think in the comments below. And thanks so much for stopping by the farmstead today. We'll see you next time.